Your stop, the station. This exhibit was a holiday sensation at Citigroup Center in New York City for more than 20 years. It takes you on a four season nostalgic journey up the Hudson River from New York City to the Catskills and the Adirondacks. The magnificent Manhattan backlit skyline is dominated by the Empire State Building, which was then the tallest building in the world. Billowy clouds and smoke from smokestacks, signature trademarks of a Clark Dunham designed exhibit, provide a dramatic backdrop for the backlit Manhattan skyline. Four main lines on three levels circle the entire display. Each main line can accommodate up to four trains operating at the same time. In addition to the main lines, there are independent loops and back and forth lines. Up to 30 trains can see action simultaneously, but the exhibit used to run a lot more. The trains are controlled by a series of sensors and a block system, similar to that used by the Metropolitan Subways and commuter trains. There are three gauges of trains. The largest, O gauge, operate on the lowest level, closest to the viewer. Most remember Lionel trains from the 50s. They were O gauge. The mid-size S gauge trains operate on the middle level, American Flyer is the most famous maker of S-Gage trains and Lionel's main competitor in the 50s. S-Gage trains are a little smaller than O-Gage, but larger than HO-Gage. The majority of the trains running are HO-Gage. HO is the most popular size with hobbyists because of the realistic look, its reliability, convenient size, and the availability of many attractive scale accessories. By placing the largest trains closest to the viewer and the smallest trains farthest away, the perspective is forced, which gives an exaggerated sense of depth. The idea is to fool the eye, or as the French say, trompe l'oeil. Force perspective is a device used frequently in theater, so it is not surprising that Clark, a veteran Broadway set designer, incorporates force perspective and other theatrical techniques into his train exhibits. The computerized lighting system turns day into night every three and a half minutes. Next stop, Generac a mythical river town located in the Hudson Valley, about an hour's train ride from New York City. It is summer, 1955. There's the Bates Motel. If you're planning to stay over, I would suggest looking elsewhere. Hey, one of the best Westerns ever made is playing at the drive-in, High Noon, starring Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly. Turn the corner and you will come upon the centerpiece of the station exhibit, the Catskills. Passengers and logging trains circle the mountains in a double helix pattern and cross the valley on a series of high bridges. This fine model of a hotel is based on many luxury hotels like Grossinger's and the Overlook that used to be scattered about the area. Fall becomes a North Country winter, and it's the holiday season. The Old Gage Tin Plate North Pole Express is packed with gaily wrapped presents. There's the dog skating with the kids, skiers warming by the fire, a kid making snow angels, and kids building a snowman. With the toy look and blocky wooden houses, this side of the station is more fanciful than the other scenes of the station exhibit. The Dunnan's homage to the folk paintings of Anne Marie Robertson Moses, better known as Grandma Moses, who lived and painted in Hoosick, New York, about an hour southeast of Pottersville.
The Hellgate Bridge exhibit was originally built by Dunham Studios to be part of a commercial model railroad attraction in Williamsburg, Virginia. It stayed there along with the original Citibank station for five years. This Hellgate Bridge exhibit is an expanded and enhanced version of that original Williamsburg display. The Hellgate display, enormous by model train standards, is over 100 feet long. 19 trains operate and the action is non-stop. The design and colors of this scratch-built 16-foot long model are not based on the actual bridge, but on the original green and cream Lionel toy version of the bridge. As you look at the three hand-carved bridges, the trestle and the mountain tunnels, you become aware of the rush of trains on every level, trains above, trains below. Nestled below the Hellgate Bridge is the cheerful little town called Hope. Hope is made up of 96 Department 56 Snow Village buildings. Although the Snow Village series is a little large for O-Gage trains, its colorful interpretation of winter generates a festive, fanciful, good old days mood, which is exactly what Clark wanted for his town called Hope. The hometown feel is further enhanced by vignettes such as the parade in the snow and the ice skaters, skiers, and folks sledding on the frozen river. Continuing left, we leave the idyllic town of Hope and come to a city of tall, stylized, painted wooden skyscrapers called Bedford Falls after the town in Frank Capra's 1946 holiday classic movie, It's a Wonderful Life. The New York City Subways exhibit captures the spirit and energy of Park Avenue today and shows the way railroad trains operated under Park Avenue on their way to Grand Central Terminal. In the 1800s, 4th Avenue, now called Park Avenue, was an open railroad yard, complete with turntables and roundhouses. In the early 1900s, the tracks were buried in a tunnel and Park Avenue, now minus the trains, became valuable Manhattan real estate. In 1904, the city's first subway trains also started operation under Park Avenue. While the train tunnel south of 42nd Street was converted to a tunnel for automobiles, the subway still operates. Many trains rush back and forth, including the famous Redbirds of the IRT lines. Framing the New York subway's display is a large graphic reproduction of the 1948 New York subway map. In those days, the lines were independently owned and free transferred were offered between the lines. The MTA was formed in 1965, the various lines merged and free transfers were eliminated. Above the trains and busy Park Avenue traffic, the stylized high rises and clouds form another spectacular backdrop. A magic world opened in Flushing Meadows, New York. It was the 1939-1940 World's Fair 
featuring this wonderfully optimistic world of tomorrow. At the heart of the display is the exhibit that is called Railroads on Parade, which uses period locomotives to tell our country's railroad history using the famous dancing locomotives. While the locomotives didn't really dance, they did come towards each other on the same track, meet, then back up, a pair at a time, each pair representing a different era. Steam was now part of the past, and new diesel locomotives and streamliners represented the future of transportation. Visitors filled the stands to watch the trains of the future at the fair of the future.